Hello, and welcome to Words That Power Murder Hour. Um, my name is Shelly, and in this video, I'm not going to do a makeup portion. I'm just going to go straight into it. Um, false rape allegations, or false SA allegations, because YouTube. So, I was researching for the consent video. And I did a Google, Google search and I typed in R allegations. And here's what happened. Now, there's the National SA Telephone Hotline with RAIN, R A I N N. That came up, that's good. Trump may soon have to answer rape allegations under oath. Right on. And then it got weird. And then it went off the rails. Fighting false allegations of rape. False allegations of rape. False allegations, false allegations. Here's the truth about false allegations of SA. False reporting. False rape, filing false vice reports, false allegations, defending against false allegations, and on and on and on and on. And this is why I don't want to hear the term buyer's remorse ever again. Because every woman I know has either been raped, sexual assault, sexual harassment, something. Every single woman except maybe four or five women that I haven't had that conversation with yet. The last time I checked the stats, And I almost don't want to go check again. But it was one in every three women. Deal with some form of sexual harassment. So think of all the women you know, add them all up, pair them off in threes, one out of every three. Is there a problem with false rape allegations or is there a problem with rape in this culture? Now, I'm an ex-sheriff's deputy. I worked in uh, criminal courts. Here's the deal with false rape allegations. Did you know that a lot of those so-called false allegations are just cases that law enforcement or prosecutors didn't want to do anything with they they do uh, no it's he said she said there isn't evidence well, well that's your ex you were in a relationship with them well well you were on a date though Are you sure you didn't do something to lead them on? There is a problem in this culture wherein there is a crime that is not treated like a crime. You know, your body as a woman, your body isn't looked at as your possession. My body is not looked at as my possession. My body was not looked at as being my possession when I was SA. I went to law enforcement. I had a doctor and two nurses who were willing to step up for me as witnesses. A fucking doctor and two nurses. 
and law enforcement refused to take the case. They were like, whatever. Go watch, um... If you have Netflix, go watch the series Unbelievable. I watched it. It was brutal. It was very difficult for me to get through. Um, and I hate to say this, but it is typical. If you haven't seen that and you are all about saying, but but buyer's remorse. Go fuck yourself and also go watch Unbelievable. And understand that it is typical for victims of sexual violence to be treated like nothing actually happened by law enforcement and prosecutors. And rapists and abusers see that and they'll say, well, I can just go ahead and do it anyway because I'm not going to suffer any consequences. It doesn't matter. Some of these Some of these websites that are talking about false rape accusations are just stunningly ignorant. It's, it's willful ignorance is what it is. Yes, they do happen, but they are rare. And when you focus on those alone and you're like, oh, but look, See, look, then you're negating all of the real cases. There are far more cases of rape, sexual assault, sexual violence, etc., than there are cases of false rape allegations. So are we going to fo focus on the false rape allegations? Or are we going to fo focus on the actual, real problem, the 10,000 pound elephant in a fucking room. You know, the equivalent of saying, oh, your car was stolen? Well, yeah, but you could have faked that. You could have faked it. So you're on your own. We're not going to investigate. Oh, your house was broken into? Oh, well. Don't know what to tell you. You could have faked it. Doesn't matter. A person's body? So a car or a house has more importance and real world tangible value to a person's well-being than their body. Really? Wow. Wow. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at this website right now and I ask the question, what if a woman has consensual sex and then regrets it the next day? What if a woman gets dumped by her boyfriend and decides to accuse him of rape as revenge? What if she's just doing it for attention? What if, after being heavily traumatized, she is then placed in a room with a law enforcement officer who asks her questions and then asks her more questions of which they're irrelevant and shouldn't even be asked 
And then that officer decides that she's unbelievable. Maybe that officer just blows her off. Just whatever. It's not a big deal. Or what if that officer decides to intimidate that victim into recanting? Watch unbelievable. Because that happens more often than people realize. Attention. she just does it because she just wants to you know it's a rich person that she is accusing and she just wants that paycheck she just wants to make money off that like Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby or Larry Nassar or Jeffrey Epstein or Marilyn Manson my god how many times have we heard that R. Kelly and now T.I. and I can go on all fucking day long. So, most of those accused and some convicted serial rapists have victims each, sometimes in the hundreds. So, all of those people are making up what happened to them? It takes over 50 to 100 victims coming forward for anyone to fucking pay attention and actually do something? Really? Larry Nassar. If you haven't looked into that case, it's a damn shame. Buyer's remorse. That's why I'm disgusted by that term, buyer's remorse. That's why I don't ever fucking want to hear it again. And if you say that, you're an asshole. That's why I don't want to hear the term false rape allegations anymore. This is minuscule. It is minuscule. The actual real false rape allegations are minuscule. Because so many of those false rape allegations, do you know what they are? They were cases that were willfully turned away by law enforcement and prosecutors or tossed out by a judge. That doesn't make them false. That just means that the so-called justice system doesn't give a fuck. That means if you're not the perfect victim, you don't get justice. It means if you're a sex worker, oh well, whatevs. That means if there's a rumor that you're promiscuous, well, you know, she might have been sleeping around anyway. She probably just wanted it. So why am I focusing on this? Because words have power. And when you say these things, especially to a survivor, you are telling that survivor that you don't care about that person. You don't care about them. You don't give a shit about them. You are telling them that, especially if they have told you what they've been through, and then you turn around and say those things, you're telling them that you don't believe them. You're not taking what they said seriously. You don't give a shit about how they feel. You, you don't care at all about their emotions or mental health or their healing journey. You only care about you. That is the opposite of empathetic. That is apathetic. You are apathetic to survivors if you talk like that. Okay, so let's see. So this article, actually, might be a good one.
you know, jump ahead and read part of this. But my research, including academic studies, journalistic accounts, and cases recorded in the U.S. National Registry of Exonerations, suggests that every part of this narrative of false rape allegations is wrong. What's more, it's wrong in ways that help real rapists escape justice, yes, while pervasively making it more likely that we will miss the signs of false race rape reports. Innocent men rarely face rape charges. Innocent men rarely face rape charges. Let's start with the idea that false rape ac accusations ruin lives and are therefore a universal risk to men. Generally, feminists dismiss this idea by arguing that false rape al allegations are rare. Only between 2% and 10% of all reports are estimated to be false. Estimated being the key word. What's equally important to know, however, is that false rape ac ac accusations almost never have serious consequences. Okay. It's exceedingly rare for false rape for a false rape allegation to end in prison time. But it's also exceedingly rare for a real rape allegation to end in prison time as well. So, um, this may be hard to believe, especially considering that rape is a felony punishable with years in prison. However, to start with this worst case scenario, um, it's exceedingly hard for a false rape allegation to end in prison time. Right. According to the National Registry of Exonerations, since records began in 1989, in the U.S. there were only 52 cases where men were convicted of sexual assault were exonerated because it turned out they were falsely accused. And in some of those cases, it wasn't actually the victim who accused them. It was law enforcement who accused them. I know this because I've written papers about this. Um, by way of comparison, in the same period, there were 790 cases in which people were exonerated for murder. So I'm pretty sure this article um, is talking about things that happened in, or have happened in England and not the US. Um, by constantly bringing up false rape allegation, you are dismissing all of the actual rapes, sexual assaults, and all of that that are happening to people. And therefore perpetuating the problem instead of doing something, anything, to help fix the problem. And a woman you know hears you saying that. And she's a survivor. Keep that in mind. I know too many women who have been sexually assaulted, raped, what have you, intimidated into having sex, which is rape. That's rape. Um, you know, when you're sitting there with someone and they're, they're just, you're just having a conversation, right? You're just talking and they tell you that this happened to them. They're not, they're not going to gain anything from that. They're not going to get any kind of attention from that. What? That's a level of stupid that shouldn't even exist. Like, how can you breathe and be that stupid, is my question, if you actually believe that shit. Look, here's the thing. Everyone who uses that language of buyer's remorse, 
false rape allegations should be the main focus in their minds, all that shit, just take all of that and choke yourself with it. I have no more patience for it. I will not tolerate it in my life. And you prove when you think this way and you talk this way, you prove uh, that you probably have the mental capacity of a 12 year old. And you know, some of these people who do this, they will couch it in, well, you're just taking the emotion out of it and thinking logically and critically and blah, 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 blah. No, they're not. No, no, they're not. Because they're not listening to the actual experts who actually know what the fuck we're talking about. They're not listening to the uh, victims advocates who have been sitting there with victims in the hospital while they're getting their rape kit taken. They have not sat there while uh, their victim statement is being written out. They haven't sat in the courtroom and, and listened to the victim up on the stand trying to hold it together because they're in the same room with their abuser who's sitting at a table staring at them. I, I think that all of the survivors need to basically force this culture to change how we talk about survivors, about children, little girls, little boys, about how we talk about women, how headlines are written in newspapers or, you know, any form of news media. How, you know, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, you know, the few charges he actually was convicted of, uh, his victims who were underage minors were, were, I'm going to do a video on that motherfucker. <laughs> what was he charged with? A minor can't consent to having sex. Minors can't consent to being prostitutes. But if you're rich enough and well-connected enough, then instead of being charged as a pedophile, you can be charged with what? I, but you know, false allegations and buyer's remorse. That is such an immature, pathetic way to think and view things. And I don't know how many people have said this. I've heard say this in conversation and, and, and then turn around and say, but, but they're all for the victims and you know they're they're feminists and they're all about, you know, women's rights and whatnot. And they'll still say things and perpetuate the whole buyer's remorse, false allegations, blah 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 blah. You're not a woman's advocate. You're not a victim's advocate. You are not, you're not a feminist. You're not, no, no, you are the opposite. You, you may not realize that, but yes, you are. You're victim blaming, you're victim shaming, and instead of looking at the actual problem, the real problem, you're looking at the bullshit. Alright, so I'm going to end this video before I actually like go on a full on rant. I'm trying not to do that right now. I'll save that for later. Um, you have the right to say no. You have the right to your own body and if anyone wants, wants to disrespect that 
just yeet them into the sun. Say bye, Felicia. All right, I'm, I'm going to go. Bye. Hello. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, and if you're enjoying my channel, then please like, subscribe, share, follow, ring the bell, and hit all. Um, comment, all of the above. <laughs> it all helps with the algorithm to get the videos up so that people who need them can see them. And that is the whole point of what I'm doing. Um, thank you, and uh, have a good day, night, or whatever. Bye. See you later.